How's it going people? Salmon Slabber here. And this is a nice little video just to cover quite a lot of the patches that have just come through recently. As there's quite a lot of them. Uh, most of the information is only in the forums though. They haven't really mentioned most of it on the front page. As well as some of the new stuff that's in game like uh, Triskelion Treasures and the new tool belt system and the tweaks they've made. Stuff like that. So nice bits of little information you may or may not have actually heard of. So I thought I'd throw this in. So starting off, a couple of days ago, you had uh, Triskelion Treasures was added to the game. And basically for those of you who don't actually know, the Triskelion Treasures addition to the game was an addition of the Triskelion Key. Which, when completed, will lead you to a cache of hidden stuff. And basically it'll give you nice new loot. It's kind of... Uh, Think of it as an add-on to clues is the best way to look at it. Uh, for this key, you need to find three pieces of the Triskelion key found all around RS. It's normally found during high-level activities, which typically require 80+. plus. When you find all three of those pieces, you can combine them into a completed Triskel key. And when you've done that, you can then use locate with the key, and you basically get given directions to the cache. And eventually when you find it, you can open it up and get your prize. The pieces of the Triskelion aren't actually tradable. It's very similar to clues, so you will have to find them on your own. A uh, couple of activities you can get it from is killing most monsters that require 80 plus Slayer. Getting drops from the rear drop table. Uh, smithing Mithril to rune ceremonial swords in the Artisan's Workshop with a score of at least 80% will get you them. Harvesting a wishing well fruit, pickpocketing elves and dwarf traders, chopping elder trees, or elder evil trees, should say. And you can also get them when hunting kingly ilbins. There's a bunch of other ways you can get it. That's basically just a nice little overview for you. So there's plenty of ways to do it. And basically, once you crack open this chest, you'll gain a bunch of items. They haven't listed them off so much. They've basically just said, um, Valuable ores, logs, gems, seeds, and as long as you're not already at your limit, an ancient effigy. So yeah, there's a chance of effigies through this Triskelion key. Additionally, there's new armor to be found inside. It's Dragonstone armor. Uh, basically, this brand new armor is kind of a mixture between Rune and Dragonstone. It looks kind of funky. Uh, they do have pictures of it on the front page, although it is... Um, artwork not in game so yeah not quite sure what it looks like in game yet I haven't actually seen anyone with it so basically this brand new set of armor is level 50 and it's hybrid gear the only other hybrid gear that really comes to mind is I think accuracy and void so yeah it's nice to have something in between on top of that this dragonstone armor is supposedly going to be able well usable by both free and members so it is new high level gear for the free world as well. So all in all it's not a bad update, it's kind of just adding a clue scroll, or another set of clue scrolls I guess. Um, it's kind of like a passive thing, exactly the same way you look at clues. Some people do them, some people don't, but if you do then there's a chance of getting awesome stuff. And typically you'll just get your normal basic loot. which still is worth it I guess because you can make a few hundred K each time which is kind of nice. A uh, bunch of other stuff uh, along with that update. Uh, basically they updated the Solomon store which is kind of meh. They added the new XP lamps from the genie lamps. Some of you may have got pieces of it in drops and skilling and stuff. It's uh, like the spout the pot and the handle. I think it is. You've got to combine those three pieces and it'll make a lamp of a kind. There's five different kinds of lamps and you can either use them straight there and then and it'll give you XP in one skill and I think it's like four others. Or you can wait until you've got one of each, combine them all together and get XP in every skill. So yeah, there's that. Basically you can get some of those pieces from the Squeal of Fortune and you get them randomly in drops and I'm assuming doing high level content. Uh, the Wilderness Warbands have undergone following changes. Now, a couple of you have actually said to me about the Wilderness Warbands. Personally, I've never actually done it. So, to me, this doesn't really bother me at all. Uh, so, let's get with it. 
Items looted from Warband Camp are now dropped on death. They can also be picked up by PKers. Players can still only acquire via camps or via PvP 75 per day. Players will lose any Warband items they currently hold in if they try to log into the wilderness. So basically I'm assuming this was where people would add each other on their friends list so they could like insta join into different worlds to try and get more loot, things like that. This is basically to prevent that from people taking advantage of it, which fair play. I'm sure many people are going to moan at because people just like getting easy XP and easy items. I mean, who doesn't like it just getting handed to you? But all in all, I think that's a fairly fair update. They kind of balanced it out a little bit. Uh, Quirgus will now trade the items retrieved from a warband camp for either XP as before or for Fall K coins. Each camp now only has 1000 lootable items, so first come first served, and the warband events are now synchronised across all worlds with one starting every 7 hours. So basically what this means is you won't just be able to do warbands the entire day I'm assuming. I honestly don't know. I never do warbands. I've never done it. I haven't even gone up there to look. Uh, the next one is kind of annoying for me personally because I was just trying to mess about with it <laughs> as soon as this update came out, pretty much. Uh, basically, AoE spells have been altered to function as they did previously. AoE spells now deal slightly less damage to non-main targets. Now, the reason why this is annoying is, you, at the moment, all I say annoying is balances the game to be totally honest. Basically I could go up to Saradomin with basically an entire inventory of overloads, renewals and super prayers and just blood barrage the entire time and I could stay up there for a ridiculously long time which honestly just shouldn't even be possible. I mean come on it is a boss. So yeah they've altered the AoE spells now and basically your blood spells now heal 5% damage against main targets same as before and 3% against other targets whereas it used to be 5% so with a couple of enemies there on top that's like an extra turmoil that soul split pretty much so yeah there you go uh, they've kind of loaded it down back to where it used to be which is what they should do really kind of annoying but yeah fair enough soul split has been altered the same way you gain 10% damage dealt against main targets, same as before, and any other targets is 5%. Because you could pretty much stack Blood Blitz, or Blood Barrage, and Soul Split, and you just gain a ridiculous amount of HP very quickly. As you can see in the background, I'm doing it with just the main target, using Blitz and Soul Split, and my HP is going up pretty rapid. So you can imagine what it was like with Barrage. Additionally, Coincidentally, as I was killing Saradom in that way, in line with the above update, that is the AoE spells, Commander Ziliana, also known as the Saradom in God Wars boss, has also undergone changes, surprise surprise. Commander Ziliana can now becomes enraged if attacked consistently with blood spells. So yeah, no more camping Saradom in with blood barrage permanently as I'm assuming enraged means their attack damage and stuff is just going to skyrocket and make it very hard to stay alive. Apparently they've also fixed a bug with Commander Ziliana not using her configured magical strength and they've tweaked Commander Ziliana's defensive values and weaknesses. Now next up on the list is the brand new tool belt update and tweaks. Uh, basically for those of you who've never been in Dungeoneering. In Dungeoneering you can equip your tools in a tool belt exactly the same as you do in the overworld except within Daemonheim you could put the top tier pick in and it would scale down to your level and you could still use it and as soon as you reach the tier for the next grade of equipment it would upgrade it automatically for you. Well they've just changed this now so it's now going to work global at the moment you can only put bronze pick, bronze hatchet within your tool belt. Well that's now changed, you can now put your dragon pick and your dragon hatchet in your tool belt and same as before, they won't drop on death. So it'll save you an imagery spot slash equipment slot and if you happen to die with them on you, I don't know how you would 
doing wood cutting or mining. But yeah, it'll, you'll actually now keep it. It'll be in your tool belt, so which is actually quite nice. So they've chucked that in there. They're adding a few tweaks to the game as well, which I'll mention once I get a bit more info. But yeah, that is the tool belt update pretty much. They're taking how the tool belt works in Damonheim and then throwing it into the overworld. Which is kind of what they should have done as soon as they added it into Damonheim. I'm like, come on, let's be fair. It's kind of needed. But yeah. Anywho. Uh, not so long ago, Jagex mentioned a brand new high score system. And there was a few questions about it. Not many people really knew about it, supposedly enough. And basically they've got an FAQ in the forums which I've now got up in front of me, so I'll uh, read off some of the questions and some of the answers. So, will the high scores light API be kept so clans can continue to use it to feed the various high score SIGs and lists? Yes, we're keeping this as is. We should hopefully be creating a new version for the seasonal scores as well. Will free to play be added back to the high scores? If not, why not? If so, how are we tackling bots skewing the scores? Unfortunately, we're not going to be adding free-to-play players back into the high scores. High scores, both the current and seasonal, will remain a members-only feature. We'll be keeping an eye on bot activity, but we'll ideally be aiming to create a seasonal high scores, which are more difficult to bot. Will the GE page be updated so it's more accessible or more accurate, etc.? Yes, the GE will be updated over time. Will there be any options to track XP games within date ranges to help players run competition with their clans, etc? This isn't something we'll be supporting on launch, however we'll definitely be considering something like this in the future. And finally, are there any plans to have PvP records available such as Wilderness Kills, Clan Wars results, etc? Yes, we're planning to launch with a PvP based seasonal high score. So, yeah, there you go. It's basically the seasonal high scores will be, um, basically high scores for a week's period, a month period, three month period, or in certain activities. So, like Castle Wars, etc., Jewel Arena, uh, chopping down the evil trees, woodcutting XP in general, vibing an XP for one week, like kind of thing. So, yeah, that is the new high scores. It's kind of funky, and apparently they're gonna give rewards to whoever places on top of the seasonal high scores. So yeah, it's kind of cool. Get a little prize for being the best. Happy days. Can't really complain. So yeah, for the most part, that's pretty much it. There's a bunch of graphical updates and things as well, which I guess I can cover. Uh, it's not much really important, but uh, it's just kind of tweaks that needed to be done. Uh, so let's start off with the graphical stuff then, shall we? The Saradomin Sword will no longer display as the Saradom and Godsword. I don't know how many people noticed that, but you tend to see loads of people running around with it. So yeah, they've changed it now, so they are actually different as they were meant to be. Pickaxes and hatchets are now resheathed after use. Uh, the exquisite halberd no longer stretches when performing certain animations. The exquisite mace and offhand version now sheath in the correct positions. The white stag bow no longer stretches. A small issue with the Stompy Boat's been fixed, updated a cutscene in Love Story Quest to include the updated Carol's armor. The Fremenic Shipmaster's arm no longer has a jerky animation. Barb Tail Harpoon has been prevented from showing twice when sheathed during fishing animations. A canopy on a willow tree near Seal's Village has been fixed. Auras that make your eyes glow and now correctly show through Grim Reaper Hood on females. The colours of Saradome Van Brace has been sorted out. Capes no longer intersect with Dagon High robes. Kale in the Blood Pack quest now holds the correct weapon. Professor Arbel Knapp in Perils of Ice Mountain cutscene has been updated. The chat head seen whilst wearing Carol's coif is now the player's head instead of Carol's chat head. Gnomes that appear at the end of a first resort have been updated. A hole that formed near Pop Portal has been filled in. Chompy bird hats no longer display different colours when changing gender. The bone guard in Anacra's Lament now transforms correctly. Silver and iron sickles appear correctly when wielded. No longer any dark patches on the fire cape in direct X and a spider rope can never sheath. Whew, quite a lot, oh my god. So, that's what I mean, it's kind of, um, meh. 
kind of items. Uh, basic glitchy graphics, to be totally honest. Uh, Quest-wise, not a lot. Female trolls from Fremy Oil Quest now hit for less. Apparently they was raping people, I don't know. Skills and minigames, the stealing creation reward interface now has the correct way requirements listed. That would probably help, gotta be honest. And then other. Now this one's a bit controversial. There's one in here in particular that people are raging about on the high level forum. It's kind of funny, gotta be honest. But the disruption shield spell now functions correctly, because apparently before it wasn't. I don't know, personally, I don't actually have the spell, so I wouldn't even have noticed. Now this next one is the one everyone's moaning about, is players can now deposit raw fish from the tackle box into a deposit box by right clicking on the tackle box within a deposit box. They've also changed it so you can't store, well you can't eat or take out your raw fish in the tackle box anywhere in the world anymore. Because basically that was the tactic used, you take that up to next and you can go solo next with it. Basically, one imagery space equals 30 raw food. And with a bunyip, that's 30 cooked food, pretty much. So, yeah. That is the massive controversial thing. The tackle box has been nerfed, because, quite frankly, the tackle box should never have had that option to begin with. It still holds 30 raw fish, but the only way to get them out of your box is to go to deposit box or the old bank. So, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, come on. One imagery spot, 30 food taking a piss a bit. You can't really complain that they fixed that. Come on. A small typo on the Ascended Signet 2 has been fixed. Small typo has been fixed in the history of the Order. Relic helmets can now be stored in the Dragon Keepsake box. Dying with metal fragments from God Emissary tasks no longer causes them to be unobtainable. The God Wars ranged bodyguards now stay at ranged distance consistently. This ties in with the Bloodfire spells being nerfed and the AoE spells version of it being nerfed as well. Because basically you could go up to God Wars and because all three of the followers plus the God would kind of stack on top of each other in one spot, your Blood Barrage hits all four and that basically keeps you alive forever. And now they've changed it so the ranged enemies in God Wars stay at a distance. Which kind of sorts the mages out to be totally honest. But then I suppose you could always go stand next to the Ranger. So yeah, I don't know. I have to test her out. Uh, magic spells now check the base magic level rather than any boosted levels. The value of risk to wealth on the items kept on death interface has been corrected. The message you get when Krill Suratoth uses his prayer drain attacks been updated. The Jade Vine will no longer drop bones. Kind of makes sense, it is a plant. A spelling mistake with the XX Parrot transformation has been corrected. The examine text for exquisite shields has been sorted. Broken barrow weapons can no longer be added to Dragon Keep Saint boxes. A debug message that was occurring when using a Pylord special move has been removed. Blank examines via right clicking within Dungeon Eurin should no longer appear. That was annoying. Glad that's gone. The skill advance guides have been updated to remove magical staves from the attack sections. So yeah, there we go. That is pretty much every single little patch note I could possibly find. Uh, all those patches were on the 11th, so a couple of days ago. Pretty much the same day the Triskelion treasures and stuff came out. So yeah, that's pretty much everything. Uh, not a lot else to talk about. That is pretty much every single patch note. Uh, I guess max-wise, yeah, why not throw in the max news for those of you who are actually still listening. Um, so I got 99 Dungeon Union and Construction. That was the last max update. Since then, I did jump into Thieving, even though I did kind of moan immensely about it. I did do a bit of thieving. I'm now 91, which means the Desert Elite tasks can now actually be completed. What? Yes! Took ages! Ages and ages and ages! But yeah, that's finally done. Thieving is out the way. Uh, I did complete Dom Tower not long ago, so that means I can now record the Desert Elite and I can bung them up with the rest, because the rest of them are already up. Good times! So that's all the desert tasks complete. Happy days. On top of that, I've done a bit of Slayer. And I'm actually... I did gain a level. I'm now 95 Slayer, and I'm not far from 96. And pretty much everything you're watching in the background, me killing QPD, this is my Black Dragon task. So yeah. 
this is pretty much what I've been doing for my Slayer. If I get Aviantes, I go kill Armadil. Black Dragons, QBD. Calphite, Calphite Queen. Etc, etc. Greater Demons, Krill, Suratoth. Yeah, there you go. So that's pretty much my Slayer method is just go bossing whenever possible. Because I really don't particularly like Slayer. I find it boring, to be honest. Personally. But yeah, there we go. That's pretty much everything. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. So that is pretty much everything you need to know for patch-wise over the past couple of weeks. Um, trying to find some more now if I can, but I don't actually think there is any more. So yeah, there we have it. Uh, you can get more information on the tool belt update as well as the Triskelion key if you check out uh, RuneScape's official YouTube channel as they got the BTS's there and they talk a little bit more about the tool belts and stuff. Uh, additionally there was a update for the interface beta. Uh, it's uh, basically for your keybinds. Uh, the new interface system beta opened up to all members a few weeks ago and it's been great to see many of you trying it out blah 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 and apparently when everyone jumped into it they kind of asked for free customization of keys so now your keyboard is freely customizable they've opened up almost all the interface functionality for you to map keys wherever you want basically this means you can open your backpack with B for example or access your prayer window with P or home port with T so yeah it's like you can check at the moment you use the F keys and stuff to change windows so like F1 is imagery, F3 is prayer etc etc it allows you to change those which honestly is awesome because I wish they were in there a long time ago but now I've gotten used to using the F keys so yeah I don't know it is kind of nice to do though because having some of them out of the way I mean you could set F1 to imagery, F2 to prayer F3 to your magic book for example because those are typically the three main ones you switch between so yeah I'm quite happy with it gotta be said basically to summarize you now have a customizable loadout of keyboard shortcuts for the most common action interfaces press escape select controls option and start getting up your preferred keybinds the F keys have fixed shortcuts that open the main management interfaces but yeah there we go so there's your update. If you haven't actually tried the interface beta or the draw distance beta, give it a go. If you remember, you'll have access to it, or at least you should do. You will need Google Chrome for it, though at the moment Firefox still can't access the HTML5 resources that Jagex want. But supposedly they are working on the bug that is causing that problem. And soon enough I would have thought Firefox would update itself and we should hopefully be able to use Firefox for the HTML5 as well because personally I prefer Firefox over Google Chrome so there we go that's everything I'm sure god damn it order of ascension uh, it's not bad I don't know if many of you have actually tried that dungeon it's fairly easy to be totally honest. Um, you go in there, you stab a couple of dudes, you get a bunch of keys. They sell pretty well. To be honest, I've just sold all my keys if I ever got on them. I've only had a couple of tasks down there from Slayer. I think it's three tasks I've been down there, but I've gained a key, so I've flogged that. Happy days, pretty much. Um, bit of cash in the back pocket. Uh, Slayer, honestly, is actually making money at the moment. So if you want cash, you can always do a bit of Slayer. I have embossed all of this. Uh, the first like couple of hours when I got 95 I gained about 3 mil and that was just doing typical tasks no mess about like going bossing or anything so yeah it is pretty damn good Slayer actually makes money which is very nice to see and just in case he's watching Pigeon I've now got the dragon kite son got it before you new bosser wins there we go uh, that's pretty much everything I add my gloat I've informed you all about the patches, and I hope you are happy. Have a good day. So, until next time, catch you all later. Have a good one.